Um, today I feel super lazy and I don't want to do anything at all. Instead, I'll show you a few web pages and tell you what I think about them. That's how most Linux channels make their content anyway, right? I assume you're familiar with the copilot for the CLI that basically, um, can generate and execute shell commands from a natural language prompt. So, similar to that, we have the AI shell, but with the difference that is open source. Kinda open source to be fair, because it still uses the OpenAI API, and it also requires an OpenAI key, which means it's not even free to use. Nevertheless, take a breath, and think for a moment how impossibly amazing that actually is. Um, do you need some help, maybe? So, you see all those widgets? No matter how sweet they seem, when you're capable to have command prompts, all those are pretty much garbage. You don't need buttons and controls, bells and whistles, but only a content display that you can interact with your natural language. Sure, buttons won't get disappeared from one day to another, but you need to adjust your user interfaces for the AI inputs too. The same way 10 years back, when software engineers were adjusting interfaces for touch and small screens. The point? GNOME basically designs obsolete stuff, and that's only the tip of the iceberg. For example, when MS put Dolly capabilities on Paint, what they basically did was to open up new horizons for accessibility. You aren't that comfortable with drawing? It's okay, cause Paint will now make possible to bring your thoughts to life. It's so amazing, we actually should feel super lucky we are alive to see all those. But at the same time, I'm not saying to completely drop today's requirements and only focus on what's coming next, but you have to at least start making some preparations. Instead, if we look at the latest commit on apps design repository, we'll see a new app called Tips that basically is texting stuff like how we maximize a window. Now, I guess we should pass the discussion about the actual usefulness of such app, cause we'll die laughing maybe? But putting that aside, this mock-up is also extremely rude, because when you ask someone to implement this crap, it's like you underestimate people's intelligence and time. Don't know if you know that, but a design team's vital role is to motivate the contributors to create great apps, not to drive them to take Xanax. Hold on, I'm smart enough to tell this is not a GNOME-specific problem, but a widespread disease affecting the whole Linux desktop. For instance, System76 is building a new desktop, and the first things to promote is the accent colors and the tiling capabilities. Are you out of your minds? Obviously people love those, but only when they come on top of something that actually matters. Well, Rust matters, I accept. But basically AI will obsolete Rust benefits in like inside the next two years, with new generative AI compilers and all, even before Cosmic gets completed. So you got that so wrong too. Um, facts perhaps. Fact number one, for staying relevant, you need to integrate generative AI from your terminal to the GTK source view. Fact number two, you can't get community AI today, even if the best model is open source, and even if Nvidia cards get free to buy. Reason of course is energy, with Microsoft already heading to modular nuclear reactors to power up Azure, and I'm not sure if GNOME can build nukes without eliminating the half of population. But then again, Maybe that's the proper time to finally say it. This is a feature, not a bug. Anywho, the solution seems clear to me, but before that, let's rethink the history and how GNOME has contributed to openness. So, for the last 20 years, and pretty much since day one, GNOME supports and mostly runs on these four big vendors, AMD, Intel, ARM, and NVIDIA. For a long time, GNOME and Linux were part of the hardware vendor's monopoly problem by actively supporting them. But now we have some genuine open hardware alternatives and independent makers that Linux made possible. Lesson to learn, sometimes we have to compromise to achieve what we want. And on this case the trade-off is to use a proprietary service, out of box, till we come up with a community solution when that will be available. 
Besides, Gnome already does that in some extent with online accounts, so it wouldn't be totally erratic to add OpenAI for example, as long as this was optional. The good news is that there are already many active developers from within community that work with AI services, so we need to explore how to apply them to the Gnome core stack without locked into the platform, so it would be relatively simple to switch service without changing the user experience dramatically. Hello, me here.